Can we just take a minute to appreciate this lovely vintage Santa sleigh and reindeer? The lights don't work, but it's real vintage. And by vintage, I mean probably the 80s or 90s, which makes me feel a tad old. I hope you guys appreciate this. I mean, the lights don't work. I might need to change the fuse, but that's okay. That's our background today because we're in the dining room. Because today we are decorating Christmas cakes. <laughs> that's my plan. So hi, welcome to Moggy Box Craft. I'm Deborah, and today I'm going to be sharing with you how I decorate Christmas cakes as gifts. Really what we're doing is we're just gonna chop up some Christmas cake put all the essentials on, marzipan, icing, decorate, and then cut them into little mini bites, I guess, to give as gifts for Christmas to your loved ones, or just for yourself. Good, so now we've got that covered. I've already made my Christmas cakes. I made them in September, because I'm that kind of organized. I will leave a link to my Christmas cake recipe. I've got a wee video on it, so I'll leave it up here or in the description box, so you can go and check that out and see how I make my Christmas cakes. So, now I've made them. You've packed them away in a box for the last couple of months and you've fed them and all is well in the world. This is my box of Christmas cakes. I only made five Christmas cakes this year because last year I made 12 and um, I thought that was a little bit excessive and it took an awful long time to decorate. Not to say this, this isn't gonna be hard work or a lot of work or a little bit time consuming but hopefully it'll just take a tiny little bit less time. Fingers crossed. Let's get this out of the way first. Here is our lovely wrapped Christmas cake. What are you all going to need? What's well, a very good question. I suppose I could show you, couldn't I? Fondant icing, marzipan, icing sugar, piping things, pre-coloured icing, cutter, scissors, pastry brush, apricot jam, leftover Tupperware that you've been saving from all those takeaways, parchment, baking paper, and knives, and chopping boards. Did I say chopping boards? Chopping boards. Oh, and a rolling pin, and your cake. I've got my box of cakes here. I'll just put that out of frame. I think I just need to crack on and get this done, don't I? Christmas cake. Lovely. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just cut off all the edges so it looks a little bit neater. Oh, I should get a Tupperware to put these in, actually. Put my Tupperware here for all the ends, because Andy will eat all the ends, so nothing will go to waste. Cut all them off. So you just want to cut off the edge of the cake, just so everything looks a little bit neater. Obviously, when you're doing this, be really careful. Don't cut yourself. I'm just going to... Turn this on its side. Try and work my way down. And it's okay if it looks a little bit rough around the edges because it's homemade. And that's the beauty of doing this. Let's like just do a taste test, shall we? Oh, hi, Christmas. Yep, Christmas has arrived. Oh, wow, we're going to have a feast eating all out. That's basically how we're looking. So I've just tried to even everything up. Have I even evened everything up? Probably not, but that's okay. Do you know while we do this? We should listen to Michael Bublé. Alexa, play Michael Bublé. Yeah, I don't, I don't have an Alexa, so um, I'm just gonna put it on Spotify. I would like an Alexa. Alexa, wash my hair. So now we've done that, my plan is to somehow very carefully cut this cake in half again. And as we all know by now, I'm not very good at measuring. I like to do everything by eye. So that's just what we're going to do. But I think if we're really careful, we could get some really nice Christmas cake bites, I think. Oh no, we're going a little bit small that side, aren't we? It's okay, we can rectify this. So just go ahead and cut your cake in two halves. I mean, you guys can measure it, but I'm not going to. We now do have two cake halves. So now you've got your slab of cake that's about seven inches by seven inches by about one inch. Put that to one side. Now we've cut our cake in two. We kind of have to decorate. Decorate with marzipan and icing before we can do any cutting or slicing of the cake. 
Hi pal, the dogs have discovered I'm working with cake and they're hoping that it's going to be crumbs. Great. On that note, if you hear any snuffling, sneezing, wheezing, breathing or anything weird like that, it's probably the dogs. No, no, it is, it is the dogs. It's definitely the dogs. They don't care. I really hope you guys don't either. Hi. No, no, none of this is for you. So now we've cut our cake in two, before we can slice it into little cake shaped yummy bites, we're going to have to decorate them. Or at least put the marzipan icing on, which is the most important part really, isn't it? Got me some icing sugar. Open that up. Oh, oof. Hi icing. I'm sorry, none of this is for you darling. I'm sorry. Got my icing sugar. Marzipan. Pelly. Serious investigations going on back here. Go lie down, please go and lie down. Hello, lie down. Oh, that kind of worked. Excellent. Get yourself some marzipan because no Christmas cake is complete without marzipan. How much do you think we're going to need? I think we should go for about. Is a third of a block going to do it? Or do we just go half? I think half a block will do it. Excellent. So I'm just going to sprinkle out a little bit of icing sugar. Get yourself a spoon of icing sugar. Sprinkle that over your board. Just take about 250 grams of marzipan, get a rolling pin, and we're just going to roll out the marzipan. R relatively carefully. Roll that into a nice flat piece of marzipan until it's about the same size that'll fit on the top of your cake. And every now and again, I'm just going to flip it over, and we're just aiming for the marzipan to be about the same size as our cake. So yeah, use the icing sugar so it doesn't stick to the board. Just turn your marzipan occasionally just to make sure it's not sticking. Try and make sure that your marzipan is even throughout. I love marzipan. I think marzipan and Christmas go together like, well, Christmas cake and Christmas. Or Christmas cake and Christmas trees. I just don't think you can go wrong with a good slab of marzipan on a Christmas cake. So now you've rolled out a whole load of marzipan. Hopefully it should fit nicely on your cake. Come you year Christmas cake. Christmas cake. Marzipan. Is that going to be big enough? Obviously we'll cut off the frayed edges that don't look so great. To get my marzipan to stick to my cake, I like to use apricot jam. So yeah, get yourself some apricot jam. And then I like to put my jam in a little bowl and then stick it in the microwave for 30 seconds. So once your jam is heated up for 30 seconds, this just makes it a little bit runnier and just a little bit more easy to work with. Apply to the cake. Obviously, jam's gonna get really hot as any sugar product heated up. So don't heat it up too much and don't get any of it on your skin. So just take a pastry brush and just paint that over your cake. It's like a sugary glue. Now with some warmed up apricot jam. Take a pastry brush and just brush that warm jam all over the top of your cake. And this is just going to help as a binding agent. That will help your marzipan stick to your cake. So now you've pasted your cake with your sugar glue. Take your marzipan, just pop it on the top there. Next up is your white fondant icing. Did I even say that right? Fondant icing. Fondant. Fondant icing. I don't feel that sounds right, does it? Wow, this is a lot of icing. Let's just use a quarter of this block. So 250 grams we're using. A bit more icing sugar. Sprinkle more icing sugar. Spread that on your board. That'll just save your icing or marzipan sticking. So 250 grams of white fondant icing. This is the bit where I realise I've got sort of a bit of marzipan still there and my white icing doesn't end up looking very white. Marzipan be gone so my icing stays white. Go ahead and roll your icing into a nice sheet of icing. I've rolled out icing that's maybe not that neat but it's okay because it's homemade. And you want people to know that you've made it and made an effort. Now we've got our icing all rolled out. I'm going to stick the icing on top of the marzipan with water. Chug of water. Pastry brush. And then with just a little bit of water and a pastry brush. Don't use too much water. Just brush that on top of your marzipan. And this will help the fondant icing stick to the marzipan. Just a tiny bit. Don't need loads. I've probably put way, way, way too much on the air. I have put way too much on the air. 
So that's okay though. And then we're gonna take our icing and just pop that on top as well. Well, that was nice and easy, wasn't it? Parchment at the ready. I'll put the parchment on top of the cake. A bit of parchment. So you pop the bit of parchment onto your cake. Chopping board on top of parchment. Chopping board, top of that. Flip your cake over and then flip. Ta -da. So your cake's now looking something like this. Take yourself a lovely sharp knife and I just want you to go around, follow the length of the cake and just trim off the excess icing and marzipan. And I like to call this snacks for the next month. This is the best bit of making your own cake. It's like you get to eat all the little bits of leftover icing and marzipan. So just go around and just cut off all that excess marzipan and icing. Go around the edges and remove any excess icing and marzipan. Get your ruler, measure your cake. Just gonna take your ruler and another sharp knife. My cake is about seven inches by seven inches. What's that in centimetres, I wonder? It doesn't matter because we're only doing this in inch sections. Here we should do inch and a half bites. So just measure out inch and a half, just a little scores into your cake. And along this way as well. So now you've put your little lines in your cake, we you should just be able to cut through. Actually, do you know, I could probably just use my ruler. My ruler's about an inch and a half. Just go ahead and cut your cake into slices. Oh, and you are going to be like a tiny mini bites. Yes. Turns out the ruler is an inch and a half across. I'm just using the ruler as my guide. Cut my cake into strips using the guide of the ruler. Must everything be accurate? Probably not. There's usually an easier way. Do the same horizontally. Just go the opposite way. Just keep working along. Until all your pieces of cake are cut. And don't worry about it being uneven. It's all going to get eaten. Mm, that'll work if it looks a little cake bite. Just me I can do a taste test. Oh, I approve. Mm -hmm. Now you've cut your cake into squares, you need to turn it the right way around. So my plan is to repurpose and reuse. Just basically, you go to takeaway shops, right? And you get all these plastic containers. Well, I save them and I like to give them away at Christmas. So I've been saving them. I think six little bites in each of these would be perfect. Let me go wash my hands again, actually. So take your repurposed Tupperware and I'm just gonna pop six of these little mini bites into your containers, like so. And pop them aside for decorating later. And then just carry on until you've done all your cakes. I've just spent the last hour or so cutting up three cakes. And this is kind of what we're left with. Obviously, because the cakes weren't exactly the right measurements. So I've gotten some sort of bigger Christmas cake bites and some little Christmas cake bites. That'd be really good to give to where you take your dog to go swimming or your dog walker. There's a few of them, so they've, there's more to share around. That's what they're sort of looking like in their boxes. From three cakes, I've managed to get 21 boxes, which is great because it means I've repurposed 21 takeaway boxes that were just clustering up my cupboards. Well done, me. I was planning on using these icing packs and doing like holly leaves and holly berries, but turns out, like, this is my like smallest holly leaf cutter. So yeah, that's my tiniest holly cutter. There's just not going to be enough room on little, little cake bites for them. So we're just going to improvise a little bit. So instead, we're just going to artfully and artistically go to pour some icing over the top of the cakes and sprinkle them with a little bit of edible glitter. And that's the route we're going to go down instead. For this, all we're going to do, big jug, icing sugar, Got some vanilla extract and some water. We've got some edible cake glitters or glitter spray. And it says cake decor on, so we're gonna just use that to make them festive. I've also got some of these icing bags. I know they're disposable, but I got these quite a few years ago and I don't use it very often. And there's quite a lot in here, a hundred. I mean, who is going to use a hundred icing bags? Cake boss, that's who not Deborah in her kitchen. It's still pretty much full. So we've got our icing bag. So to start with, I'm just gonna get dogs, they said. It'll be fun, they said. It is fun most of the time. Right, where are we at? I'm gonna prep my piping bag first. 
So I'm just gonna pop the top off here. I've got like three little bitties. First pop the piping end in there, and then the biggest screw bit. And as I hold it all in place, got a little screw thing, just screw that on. Now we're all prepped. Got a glass here, I pop that into the glass, and now we're ready for the icing. To make my icing, I don't really measure anything. To make my icing, I just put a whole load of icing sugar into my jug. Some vanilla extract, good blob of that in there, why not? And then I'm just gonna slowly add water. Okay, I kind of want it runny, but not too runny. And yeah, just keep mixing until you've got a consistency you like. I just find if it's too runny, it kind of goes everywhere. But if it's too thick, it's really hard to pipe out. But at the same time, if it's too wet, it goes everywhere and it's not very nice. It kind of, it's a bit, oh, it's just too watery. If it's too watery, it's just too watery. I think this is a bit trial and error. I'm sure there'll be someone out there that could tell you exact measurements. Just do a tiny, tiny bit more water. That's a pretty good consistency now. Now you've got your icing to a consistency you like. Go ahead and just pour it into your piping bag. So take your wee tray of Christmas cakes. Make sure they're all kind of lined up nicely. And with your icing, just... You can do any pattern you want. I'm just going to go for a sort of a crisscross effect. Just like that. And then just a little spray of silver. A little spray of gold. And there is your homemade, homemade Christmas cake gifts. So yeah, I'm just gonna do a few, a few crisscross ones. Same idea. A little spray of silver, a little spray of gold, and you're done. Just gonna wait for these to dry and I can pop the lids on. So there we have it. All 21 boxes of cakes are iced, decorated. All that's left to do, get your stack of lids, pop your lids on, and all I've done is just printed off little labels so my friends will know what it is in the box. So I've just got myself a gift tag, print off some labels, Pop the labels on. I just put a little bit of twine around the boxes. That was me showing you putting twine round. I know, right? And you're done. That is the mini cake gifts finished. I hope you've enjoyed seeing this very easy, very simple, but yet I think quite effective gift for the holidays. Obviously, we didn't get any decor on the top. I'm have to work on that for next year. And I do think a nice homemade gift is really nice because I made it with love. Do feel free to share this video with anyone that you think might find it useful or educational or entertaining. Subscribing is optional but it is really appreciated. And follow me for more fun content whether it's crafting or baking or in the garden or just general life I guess. I hope you have a lovely morning or afternoon or night, wherever you are. Now to dish out some Christmas gift in cake forum. So thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! I hope you like my uh, Santa and reindeer. I'll try and get him fixed because he's very vintage. He's actually got proper old school lights in him. 
even if they don't work right now. I refuse to throw him out. He will don our living room with light once more. Or dining room. I don't even know what this is anymore.